<laughs> there are going to be so many different kind of people coming there, different ages, different, um, different backgrounds, different faiths. Some people will be religious, some people won't at all. And so I wanted to make something that would um, be a comforting distraction perhaps um, for all these people and not make anyone feel alienated which was quite a sort of quite a tough brief really uh, ever since I was a student years ago I, I used to go to the British Museum and I loved um, I loved the Sumerian um, sculptures there and they have these praying figures that people would leave inside temples to pray on their behalf while they were busy doing whatever they were doing um, and they have this lovely calmness to them they have their hand in a stylized gesture um, that was their form of prayer and they just look so calm and resolved and I deliberately kept the face very abstract because I didn't want it to look like um, I didn't want people to think oh that reminds me of my teacher or you know someone specific and I, I hope that people will be able to pass it by many times and think, oh, I didn't notice that before. I really want my work to be touched, which is also partly why I leave so much texture, because it is a, a, a sort of very much a physical experience. And I really, I mean, the, the greatest thing for me is when I come back to look at a sculpture and I can see that it's been stroked or kissed, um, which does happen sometimes. And it's just as a sculptor, there couldn't be anything nicer to, to know that people have related to, to your figure in a, in a personified way. And I decided to leave these um, partly just, just to show the story of how she was created. And a friend saw my my different surfaces within the sculpture and she felt that it was uh, that it that it told the story of 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 life really that you get these soft smooth surfaces that are almost like the body of a, a young person specifically a young woman because of her curvaceousness and then these craggy textured areas are almost almost as if they tell the story of someone's life because we all end up with wrinkles and scars as we go through life. And, um, and so that's part of the extra layer of story within this sculpted woman. Here's the lump of rock that, uh, that my figure was carved out of. I was so lucky because I'd been looking around for this very particular warm coloured sandstone and quite a few of the quarries that I phoned uh, to source the piece of stone had it but only from a very low bed height so I was really quite stuck because I had quite a specific size that I wanted in mind and then just by chance Fairhavens round the corner from just, just outside Cambridge in Bottisham had this huge piece. They've got about three pieces, about two tonne each, more than two tonne, and um, they were able to give me enough stone exactly for the figure that I had uh, in mind. You could look at a piece of stone like this and think, that's, that's what I want, but then when you cut into it, you might find that deep down there's there's something you don't want or you know from this you can't tell that beautiful grained effect that will be revealed inside so that was uh, a really lovely surprise for me to have that I was very grateful for it, it I hadn't anticipated it and you know you hear this classic story of someone who carves a figure and then finds a, a shell or a shake or something right on the nose it can happen at any time and you just have to do your best to examine the stone and look to see if there are any fault lines on the outside. It is a natural product and there's a certain amount of luck to it, which makes it exciting. I'll show you. What I'll do is I'll pour some water over it and it'll show you how um, the stone will look when, when it's rained on. 
it's been really nice because uh, the figure's been here for a while while I've been working on other jobs. And so I've seen, um, I've seen the figure in various different lights and in different weather conditions. Um, and that's really lovely for me to go, OK, that's going to look quite good when it's in situ. It's the layers of stone, how it's been formed. So obviously a lot happened millions of years ago when this uh, stone was being laid down. There must have been lots of different minerals and, and things going on in that area, which has resulted in this, this sort of light and dark layers. So this is how it would have been laid down. And because of that, as the stone dries, it has this very curious, uh, curious effect. And it really emphasises the curves of her body. So I hope that this will be just one more layer of interest for people. And, um, you know, they might have passed by the sculpture many times, but not straight after the rain when the sun comes out. And so it'll be another layer of interest for them to go, oh, what's going on here? I'm here at the Arthur Rank Hospice now, um, just outside Cambridge, and the, the sculpture is now installed in the beautiful garden. It's a very modern setting uh, with lots of squares and rectangles, very, very clean white uh, walls. She provides an interesting contrast because she's, um, she's unique in her colouring around here. Um, and she's very soft and rounded. And I think it works really well. I've seen various pictures of her uh, since she's been installed on Twitter. And you can see how the seasons change and also the light changes and the shadows she casts. So she's definitely um, become a point of interest, something to look at uh, and see how, she, how she's looking today. Most of our patients on the inpatient unit are either end of life or certainly looking towards uh, the end of their life. We're about saying, you know, it, it's going to be all right. We're here not just for you, but we're here for your family as well. And I think the sort of calmness of her um, and the sense of peace that she just emits is really all about that very calming um, approach that we want to provide for our patients and staff. And it's also been interesting to see the way that some patients have interacted with her. So you'll recall the sort of incident in the, <laughs> the, in incident. the winter, <laughs> in the winter when, you know, one of our inpatients got very worried about how cold she was perhaps feeling. Yeah, she uh, had a snow on her for Yeah, that, days that's right. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, and I think you responded on the tweet and said, well, put a, a hat and scarf <laughs> on her then. And so actually she then ended up with a hat and scarf on, yeah. which I guess with, some people may feel with art or with a sculpture is perhaps irreverent or, you know, yeah. but actually I like the way that people feel they can interact with her yeah. and that, um, you know, they're thinking enough about her to actually want to do that rather yes. than she's just a thing that's, that's here. Yes. It's confirmed to me that I, I really want to make work that can be touched, um, whether it's a big big piece like this or um, the work that I'm doing now is tiny pocket sculptures that are just to be cradled in the hand or, or kept in the pocket um, but it is all very much about touch and emotions and trying to connect with people on a um, on a sort of reassuring level so that's as an artist that's helped me really find my personal voice and direction so it's been a great, uh, great journey. I've really enjoyed it and appreciated it. Thank you.